I've got another episode of the Powers Round Up. This one, Dundee United at home, and aye. Albeit, they're not extremely great at the moment, but we're anything but that. Just before we get into this video and start talking about the weekend's fixture and the team I'm going to pick for it, I want to wish good luck to a guy called Thomas. He subscribed to the channel, he was actually the 500 subscriber to the channel, and this weekend he's competing for Scotland in the Power Chair Football. So, good luck to you, pal. And hopefully you get a good result and I can maybe give you a wee mention on the last word on Sunday. But on to the video, it's weird how much the tables have really turned considering how we felt going into this fixture on the opening day of the season to how we feel going into it now. There still are some fans that are thinking positively going into this one. Obviously I'm hoping that we can pull off a win and get the three points and get a bit closer to them in the league because last week was a real setback for us. If we'd have won last week and went into this one and then got the three points here, we could have been looking at being above both Dundee United and Queen of the South. But as it stands, we could end tomorrow in 8th place, I believe, if results go a certain way. So we really need to watch ourselves. Obviously, a lot's changed for Dundee United since that opening day fixture. They've changed manager. The mindset's completely changed in the fan base. The fans are now back at Tannerice. If you look at the attendances at Tannerice this season, you'll see that they were dwindling by every week that Shabba Laszlo was still manager. But now, Robbie Nielsen's came in. It was the appointment that many clubs could have made, especially with the amount of managerial departures that's happened even since the start of the season, even since Shabba Laszlo was sacked even. But Dundee United got their man, their ex-player, Robbie Nielsen is now their new manager, and it seems like he's starting to kind of turn the tide a bit at Tannerice. For us, I suppose it's a bit of a worrying thing that they're coming into a bit more form because Really, the reason why we picked up the win at Tanner Ice was because we got them in a vulnerable situation at that time. We played extremely well in the second half that day, but we did kind of take advantage of a poor Dundee United side at the time, and now they're kind of starting to fire on all cylinders again. I wouldn't say they're exactly brilliant, but they're certainly a better unit as a team under Robbie Nielsen than they ever really were under Shabba Laszlo, despite finishing above us and been unbeaten against us in basically every game but even if you're a Dundee United fan you know that under Shabba Lasley you were never really a fantastic team and it never really swung in one direction for you it was either a really poor Dundee United side a really good one and there never really was a middle ground where you would get solid 7 out of 10 performances every week that seems to have kind of changed now under the short spell of Robbie Nielsen so far and it's perhaps something that we need to fear again because the way we're playing at the moment, albeit we are one of the more formed teams in the league in the last five or six fixtures with eight points and I think we're only a few points off of the top of the form table. But when you really look at the performances individually, they've not exactly been great, have they? Partick at home took advantage of that mistake and two draws at home to Alloa and one where we got knocked out of the cup anyway. And of course we won at Falkirk which was a great win but arguably one of the worst Falkirk sides in recent years so I you can spin anything any way you want and I'm choosing to spin it the way of yeah we've got the wins but they're not exactly the best obviously if you want to look at the more positive light that we've got the victories and that's the end of it then obviously you can look at it that way but ultimately I think a lot of Pars fans are realising that the performances just haven't really been good enough in recent weeks and it's kind of a reoccurring theme at East End Park where we're just not really playing too well. We've only scored two league goals at home this season and one of them was that Partick goal. So it can't really be said that we're playing free-flowing football at all. I don't know, there's just something about this game that strikes a bit of fear into me. I just feel like it was brilliant at the start of the season where we thought we'd got the monkey off our back, we could finally come into this fixture with no fear at all. And I'm sure the players will go into the fixture believing that they can win the game. But there's just that wee bit in the back of my head that's telling me that something has kind of changed within the two teams since that fixture took place. And I think we've regressed as Dundee United have progressed. Enough of the negative Nelly talk, I'll go into my team and aye, here it goes. I'm going to make four changes to the lineup this week because I believe that we just need a massive change up really. So the first change I'm making is going to be bringing Ryan Williamson in at right back in place of James Cregan. We've missed so much threat on the right wing in recent weeks and I think it's a really kind of troubling thing for us. I think it's one of the reasons why we're just simply not playing any sort of free-flowing attacking football that's even slightly pleasing on the eye. So 
a threat on the right wing regardless of who's playing in the right wing position, although I feel like the player that's playing there will really help Brian Williamson go forward. I'm going to start Higgy now. He has played two reserve games, 45 minutes and then 70 minutes, but he didn't get mentioned in any sort of injury list by Johnson, so is he fully fit to play? If he is, I would play him. We all know about the link up between those two, and it's fantastic when it comes off, so I'm going to put them two in on the right hand side. Mark Dunning coming back in if he's fit, if not then probably Danny Devine, because aye, I think it's our only real feasible option. I wouldn't put Tom Beadlin in centre half, that's not where he wants to be, it's not where he even should be in this team, in my opinion. So I would put Mark Dunner in if he's fit, and then just go with Danny Devine if we have to. There's got to be an argument for Tom Beadlin getting a game here, because he is the kind of player that we do need in this side, but I'm not sure if the reserve games have really helped him in terms of taking a claim for a first team place yet, and I just don't know if he should be utilised yet as a starter in the first team, so I'm keeping him out for now. I might be totally wrong. I might be totally wrong in all this lineup because Higgy might not even be fit. But that's my team that I'd go with. Robinson in goal, Williamson at right back, Ashcroft Dunn at centre half, Jackson Longridge at left back. On the right wing, Higgy in the centre of the park. I'm going to have Vincent and Maleri Martin again, and obviously. Tom Beadlin could come in there, but who knows. It really is a toss-up between Louis Longridge and Aidan Connolly to go in my lineup. I think I would prefer if we had Louis Longridge in the left wing than Connolly. It's not that Connolly's done much wrong, but I just think that Louis Longridge won't leave the side. I think AJ will pick him, and I, I've got no problem with him being on the left wing. And up front, I'm going to have Aidan Keener and Andy Ryan. Now, again, I'm dropping Faisal. I think he needs it. And that missed last week, although it was maybe slightly harder for him looking back on the highlights, but it really should have been buried and he's just not been up to the usual standards of his goal scoring feats anyway this season at all. Obviously he still puts in 100% effort every single week, but I think he just needs a rest, so Aidan Keener and Andy Ryan up front for me. So aye, yeah, that's my team for this week. Let me know your team in the comments below. Also let me know your score prediction for this game. It's a strange one to really predict for me because I want us to win, I want us to at least get some sort of result in this one but again, as I said, there's just that lingering feeling in the back of my mind that this one's going to be a stumbling block for us and it's just going to continue the negative wave of Dunfermline stuff going on at the moment. Does Alan Johnson survive this one if we lose it? And that's it for this video guys, cheers for watching, if you did enjoy please give it a like, comment down below anything you thought, as I said, score prediction and team lineup that you would play and subscribe for more of this type of content. And until the next video, which will obviously be the match day vlog for this game, I'll see you then. Cheers guys.